Hey guys, what is going on? This is Ip of Rage Quit TV. Gonna be casting a game between Fnatic OC DPT, aka Departure from Team Fnatic. He is going up against Liquid Genro. It is a TVZ on Tal de Monte. I don't know too much about Departure. I know he's one of the Korean talents on Team Fnatic. And uh, Fnatic does have some good Koreans on it, such as Moon. And I'm assuming Departure is probably good friends with Moon now. So we'll see exactly how his ZVT ends up looking. And for all you Moon haters out there, Moon is extremely good on the ladder. Just when he goes to live events, so GSL, he does relatively poorly. I don't really understand that, but Jinro is going to be opening up with this 10 Supply Depot. The Overlord is on the way for Departure, so he can go out to scout anytime. And that looked like maybe it was a 10 Overlord. Yeah, it had to be a 10 Overlord if he is Extractor Tricking. And this one drone, are you going to go out and scout, or are you going to go to the mineral line? We are about to find out. Nope. He is going to go and start mining away. So when will um, Departure scout? I don't know. 13 is the uh, most common one. I like seeing an 11 on Tal de Monte just because it is such a big map. Liquid Geno going to be building the barracks a little bit back here. That is an odd decision. Most likely is because he spawned in this location and uh, walling this off with a... Uh, Tech addition, I think, can cause a little bit of a headache. I know a lot of Terran players don't really like Tal de Monte because the builds vary so much on it based on spawning location. At least the Sim City does. Hatch is being built, and the drone is going out to scout. So he does scout around 15. The same time, Jinro ends up scouting. Jinro goes to the Watch Tower, can see the drone, and the drone also sees the SCV on the way over to his base. Has the Overlord sitting right here in case Jenner decided to go for a bunker rush. We do have the gas and Jenner going to be immediately getting a tech lab on the barracks so it looks like he is going to be going up with a Reaper opening and that means if he can manage to get a bunker up it may just be GG right then and there. It's very hard to defend against a bunker rush when it does involve a Reaper opening. Just because Spine Callers, they don't do jack against Reapers. Their D8 charge is so, so strong. And they can get out of the bunker, throw the D8 charge, get back into the bunker before the Spine Caller can actually poke the Reaper. And uh, that that's just uh, annoying to deal with because it only takes them doing that like five or six times for the spine caller to actually take severe amounts of damage. The Overlord has left and the drone scout is coming back and is going to see the bunker. Very nice job from Departure and Jeno did not see that coming. Saw the Overlord left. He's like, now's my chance to build this bunker. You can see Jeno trying to use um, the SCV building mechanic to uh, glitch on over to the other side, but did not work. Another SCV is on the way over to uh, start finishing off this one bunker. Departure can see that now he's going to be going back to this SEV and it's so close to getting up. He's trying to make the SEV jump size, but no, doesn't happen. Bunker almost completes. The Reaper does show up. Did force out quite a few links. And the Reaper now being microed against these links. Nice starter stepping, choosing which link to attack. But the Reaper ends up going down a little bit too quick on those stutter steps. If he waited a little bit longer before stopping and shooting, then he would have actually been able to take out the Lings without getting touched. Lings get us around on this bunker, and he has produced quite a bit now. Has five Lings out. Reaper does come in from the back. Did he get a kill off? No, he didn't. But it looks like he's lost five Lings and produced five, so at this stage of the game, he has built ten Lings, which means the worker count is completely even with Juno now starting his command center. Juno actually going ahead on the workers and with 10 links out on the map departure has like two options he can either just start taking out these rocks and go for a very quick third base or he can go with a bailing bus and it looks like that is what he is going to be doing going to be going up to the bailing bus has split up his links this one overlord and uh this overlord just all around the map trying to find out if Juno goes out to scout him because he does not want to know he doesn't want to let his Baneling bust get scouted. Juno building a bunker up. Doesn't know about the Baneling bust. I don't know if he knew the gas was still mining when the speed was going. I don't think so. But the bunker is going to make him just ever so safe against this because he's getting a Marauder out. So he's going to be going with a Hellion Marauder all in to follow this up. Taking a lesson from Polt. But the Baneling bust 
It's here, and that's a lot of Banelings. Six Banelings on the way in to bust down Jinro's wall. Two Hellions are here. They have to do some superb micro. Two Supply Depots go down, almost three. That may burn to the ground. Hellions coming out. SCV is going to come out on the line to make it easier for these Hellions to micro. And the Baneling does come in. Lots of SCVs in the deep, deep red. That mule going to fall. More and more Lings coming in. And the Helly, uh, SCVs in the red cannot only be pulled off to be a part of the wall because they go down so quickly. You can see the Lings just targeting them down. And Marauder getting into the bunker. This one back here does get produced. And uh, the worker count now, 21 to 32. Bailings do finish, and this Hellion's going to try to take him out. Four Hellions here, so they should be fine against these Lings. But the Percher, he has done a lot of damage, killing off eight SCVs and taking the lead 34 to 23. He is going to be falling back home to his base. His lair is going to be a little bit delayed, but uh, he can build that anytime he wants. Does have 131 gas. Four Hellions on the way out, and Departure doesn't have that much defense about them. Queen is going to be making her way out. The creep spread is relatively nice. And these Hellions are going to be going in, trying to do some damage of a handful of Lings. Going to try to get this around. All oh, those Hellions may get some. Gets one Hellion. And now those Lings are pulling on back. The Spine Caller almost done. And that is a lot of lings by departure. And Jinro not going to be able to go up on that creep. Stim is on the way for Jinro. And the orbital is going to be landing. And because they are in these spawning locations, it's going to be really easy for Jinro to go for a marine tank down on this low ground. Because that's pretty much on his way to attack. And I think that's what Jinro should be doing. He has me lifting up his factory, going to be getting a tech lab. Just because it is one of the most cost-efficient ways to engage a Zerg player on Taldrim Altar. And when you're a little bit behind... Well, is Jinro actually behind? That is a good question. 29 SCVs, 240 drones, so I would say he's a little bit behind. Only behind on by 14 supply, but uh, the Zerg player just has an uh, economic lead. Hasn't tried to take out these rocks a little bit odd. Bailing sitting off right here, I guess, maybe trying to get a uh, sandwich on those Hellions. Hellions want to come in. There are enough Hellions to do a run by. Another Spine Crawler, though, is being produced. Those Hellions do see it, so if they want to run by, now would be the time to do so. Jinno just uh, macroing up this one SCV. Sitting idle, doesn't have a rally point on this command center. Does pop up, kills off two tumors, stopping that creep spread. And there's Bailing still just sitting on back there. And uh, I think Departure really should be thinking about trying to take a third base. Because Jinno is looking like he wants to come in. And if he does take out this natural, Departure is going to be in a sticky, sticky situation when he doesn't have a third base up. So needs to take that relatively soon. Terran players abusing that low ground right there is nothing new. It happens all the time. And here we go. The Lings look like they finally want to... Uh, take out these rocks after they realize the Hellions most likely won't be doing a run by, uh, yeah, run by. Two Marines do come down, picking off that one Overlord. Doesn't supply cap departure one bit, and you can see departure's Overlord spread relatively nice. Just has kind of a triangle out around. I would love to see this Overlord right here on the edge so you can see this force moving out by Jenner because this is going undetected. And there's Lings trying to get us round off, but just not. Baneling getting hit on three Hellions. And Jinro doesn't have any medevacs or anything for high ground vision. And this is a little bit odd. Not going to be abusing what I said. Going to be using his Hellions for high ground. Going to get some bunkers up. And there's Spine Cola is going to be moving on back. Very nice job, but now the Hellions... Can come in, finish the job on one of those spine callers. These Banelings do not have Baneling speed. It is not even on the way. The are Mutas out to try to defend against the Hellions. And a handful of Marines try to defend against the Mutas, but it doesn't look like there's enough Marines here. There's Bunkers not up. Now Departure thinking about he wants to go in with those Banelings, deciding not to. Bunker does get up. And now the Mutas can no longer easily just uh, demolish. Everything. Banelings leading the way. Banelings do get force targeted down by those tanks. And uh, one bunker goes down. That one with the Marines do. And the Mutas will be cleaning house right here. 
the Pudge are going to be holding on. And now he should definitely, definitely be thinking about taking that third base. It is going to be falling back. Finish the job on this one bunker. Does not get salvaged and also kills that off that missile turret. Did not get cancelled. The Pudge is sitting at 0, zero upgrades while in general. He is also at 0, zero. Has almost finished his plus one infantry weapons. We do have plus one flyer attack and that Baneling Speed finally started. And Depoja is showing he wants to put on some aggression now. Mist Turret's going up for Jinno. Does have a handful of Marines back here, but no medevacs. So these stims that he does is going to be horrible for the health of these Marines. Stim it twice, and then the Marines can no longer engage until a medevac comes out. And that's what this Muta play is strong at, especially when a Terran player delays those medevacs. Is going to be taking a double expand now. Knows he has the map control. Jinno cannot leave the base in these mutas. They're going to slowly poke away at the Marines. Possibly sees a lot of those missile turrets. Does not want to engage into that. And just getting his muta count ever so higher. Does have bow on the way as well. So we may see some bow banelings. And Ling's going off on a little bit of an odd way. Just looking at other bases that Jinno may be taking. He may try to go in forward pressure, but I think that would be a mistake since Jeno has a relatively decent wall off with all their supply depots and bunkers. Departure not yet taking this base, so maybe he won't be double expanding. Just decided to take out those rocks and was happy about that. 135 supply to 108. More banelings morphing in and Jeno not moving on. I'm kind of curious what forces that call to morph in these banelings because you can morph in banelings when you see your opponent leaving his base. So this... Just a complete waste of gas right now. Maybe he didn't want to be out of gas and knew he needed those banelings. I'm not exactly sure. That's a little bit of an odd call. I would have got a infestation pit and started getting up on my infestors. Muta's trying to do a little bit of harassment on that supply depot. We can go over to his hotkeys. And uh, looks like he does hotkey his hatches individually. Muta's going to find the way into the main where there's no missile turrets. And taking out a lot of SCVs. Remember, 8 did die to that early aggression. 2 probably died when they tried to do the bunkers up with the Marines and tanks. So, it looks like a total of 15 SCVs these mutas have killed. And that makes them very worth it. 40 SCVs, 261 drones. Even more banelings being morphed. And I do not agree with this decision one bit. That is a lot of gas that he just has kind of floating there. Doesn't need all those banelings, but man, if Jinro moves out, is he gonna be surprised? Maybe he was doing enough damage to Jinro. He's like, okay, well, I did enough damage to you. You're probably gonna counter all in me. And you can see Jinro, as he was moving out, kind of split up his units in case there were baneling landmines. Throwing down all those scans and a holy banelings. A lot do go down already. And Jinro gonna be sieging up. Does have medevacs now to give him vision of this high ground. This one base not being taken yet, so uh, if this hatch does go down, it will be two base to two base. And Banelings just getting the split. It looks like Departure wants to engage this with as uh, big of a concave as possible. Going to be getting a flank off on these tanks, and that is a how you do take this out. Will it be enough, though? Juno does have relatively good positioning, getting up missile turrets now to defend against Mutas and also absorb bailing hits. Mutas coming in realizing they can and looks like we have a counterattack possibly. I don't think Departure knows what he wants to do, but uh oh, those Marines out of position, not near tanks. We can see him targeting those bailing downs with his Marines and now going back in and here we go. Departure coming in from both sides, getting the flank off. Juno doesn't really lose many Marines to those bailings. Nice micro! by Jinro. And with that, I would say this natural is gonna be falling. 49 drones, 233 SCVs, 13 workers, 239 killed. And Jinro is gonna be doing the drop right here, killing off even more drones. Gonna get this one overlaid. I don't know why. Probably just the AI. Ling's gonna be coming on down, but he needs more. The tank spread is nice. Lane's coming down from the south. We want to do a little bit of counter-attack, but Jinro, he's got Marines on the way. Going to stem off, and those Lings are going to be in completely dead Lings. 1-1 one, one for those Marines. 1-1 one, one for the Lings. Natural does fall. The third base right here. Finally deciding to go up. Actually, this is the fourth. This was the third. 
and Ling's going to be going about around the map. Looks like he may want to try to take off reinforcements. That is what he would have to do. Pick off the reinforcements when they are out of position like he is doing right now. Can get relatively good trades off. And then eventually he may have enough to kill the tanks. And the key thing is for um, Deposure to kill off the tanks. He does not want these tanks to live. Because if the tanks get too high in a number, then he's just not going to be able to engage it. Infestation Pit on the way, researching that pathogen glands. Infestors are a great thing at dealing with tanks with infested Terrans. Could have helped them tremendously in that last battle. We do have plus two attack on the way. We're just now finishing, I should say, with seven Infestors being about halfway done. So it's going to come down to, I guess, the Fungal Growths if Depocha can manage to hold on. Reburn these bird banelings, waiting for Jenner to go up into his main. But instead, Jenner just going to be setting up camp outside. Knows that he has the contain right here. And there's nothing that uh, Deporture can really do about that. It all comes down to these infestors and Juno being a little bit hasty running in here and getting hit by those two Baneling Mines. And then Festus threw down a Fung Growth on two Marines. Not worth it one bit. And those Marines just slowly going to be streamlining in, killing off those Banelings. And then Festus is going to be burrowing, and now they are going underneath. Juno is going to come in here. He won't see any of the Banelings. Uh, not the Banelings, the Infestors. And he can kind of see the Shooks moving out across underneath the tanks. Is he going to get Infested Terrans up? No, he is just going to be ignoring it. Looking like he's going to be going in for Jinno's Econ. Knows that, okay, you are just on two bases still. So if I can get Infestors into your natural, poof out a lot of Infested Terrans, kill off that command center, then I will actually have an economic lead. And that is such a good call by Departure. Realizing, yeah, it's one mining base versus one mining base. And uh, gets a phone girth right here. Going to try to take out these units. Losing a handful of Infestors. Kills those Marines, there's Infested Terrans going to finish off one tank and not get the second one. Scan does go down, Banshee is out. Banshees do very well against Infestors. Bunch of Infested Terrans do come out. Tank back here by Jenro. Nice defense back at home. And those Infestors not going to be able to do all that much. More Infested Terrans going to be making their way on out. And this is most likely his last call. The Queen, 200 energy, burrowed in right here. Juno now spotting this one base. Has an Infestor here. Gets off a good Fungal Growth. And another Queen going to be poking these Marines down to their death. Only 5 HP, but no. This one Infestor does go down. We have a bunch of Lings on the way out. Meanwhile, the Sharks are coming in for Juno's natural. Lings managed to defend that. Juno still has a relatively scary army right here. Those Infestors are going to be coming in. Juno leaves this one Supply Depot unburrowed, which means that the Infestors came here. The Mr. is there to see it. Infested Terrans are out. Going to be taking out those Marines. Going to be getting three away. Going to pop off on this one tank and try to take this out. More Infested Terrans going on the next tank. That tank does end up living. Scan goes down, picks off those Infested Terrans, and even gets the repair off on this tank. And now Banshee doing harassment. Up to 8 kills so far. And uh, I don't think there's anything more that Departure can do this game. Juno has played this game relatively well. Departure had a lead, but on Taldrim Altar. And he's even getting a Raven out. How often do you see Tan players actually saying, You know what? Let's get a Raven for detection. That would be a smart idea. But as I was saying, I think Departure kind of played this map poorly. We do have the Banshee going to be uh, taken out by those Infestors. Not really that good of use. That was two Fungal Growths and four Infested Terrans. So that's 100 energy. Fungal Growth is, I think, 75. So 250 energy to kill the Banshee off. That's why Banshees are relatively good. Of course, if you clump them up and they get a multiple one Fungal per group of Banshees, that is bad. But let's go back. So I think the Poacher, again, just kind of played Taldrim wrong. In these positions, you know the Terran player, he's going to be so inclined to take that terrain to his advantage. How do you kind of counter that? By expanding a little bit aggressively. Because once the Terran player sieges up down here, 
he's going to have, like, siege on all these drones. That's not a good situation to be in. But if you have this third base over here, then you can immediately just transfer all your drones over to this base. And then you don't lose the mining time. Well, you lose the mining time of the transfer, but you don't lose all the drones dying, which is key. And uh, he kind of took this one base. It is cool to have the ninja expand. Jinro didn't see it for some time. But I think this base is very nice and relatively easy to hold in TVZs. The only thing you kind of run into is drops between this base and the main. But uh, Departure was going for mutas. He had mutas out, so drops aren't really a big scare for him. If it was Infestors, Infestor play can be kind of hold to hold this base and this base when it comes to drops, just because it takes a lot of energy for investors to kill dropships. So early on, dropships can do a lot of damage. Well, the drops can do a lot of damage. The dropships themselves, not so much. But it can be relatively hard to take out drops early on until you get that investor count higher. The investors have two fungal growths. Then it can be a little bit easier. But yeah, I think Departure just played the map wrong. If he had this base, he could have done a lot because Juno killed out pretty much all his drones and that one attack right there. So, let's go back. So right here, let's go to the workers killed. Jinder's killed one drone. And he's gonna get this position, so... I don't know if I agree with the Poacher just rolling over and giving Jinro this position right here, letting his tanks get in siege, but he did kind of leapfrog it, so I guess Jinro did that correctly. But once Jinro sinks his teeth in here and this third base isn't up, I mean, that is just bad situation all over it. And kills all that. The Poacher thinking he can take this out, but uh, this position very strong. And now you can see he's killed 14 workers. That is a lot of workers to just immediately lose. And then those workers, I don't know where they end up going. The rest of them that were here. Maybe they went up to the main. That is a little bit oversaturated. Who knows where they go off to. But um, additionally, morphing in all those bailings for departure... Also a mistake, needed to get Infestors out a little bit earlier, that Fungal Growth, or Infested Terrans. Infested Terrans are underrated. Putting them like a way, a line of Infested Terrans out, then running in, the tanks will shoot out the Infested Terrans, then all your Lings get up close, and the Bane Lings, that's the most important thing, can get up close and actually hit those Marines. But uh, yeah, let's go look at the Lava Injects that game. And I think it's this one. Yeah, it is. Here's the weird name. Going up in 10 minutes. Twenty-two point three. I think those are injects. Hopefully they are. Uh, let's see. Should have one tumor out at 7.30. The next one out at... Like, nine minutes. So it should have two tombs spreading across the map at nine minutes. Let's check that. So there's one. And he only has one. So he only used one tumor. And you can see this area and this area is just absolutely horrible. So Departure messing up his early game injects. Think, if he had those injects down, when he did that uh, all in, well not all in, the counter aggression, the bailing bust. Think if he had, let's see, this probably... I would say 12, no, I'd say probably 16 larvae that he's missed out with uh, this inject gap. So, about 16 larvae. That is going to be, let's say, 8 of that is used on lings. That is best case scenario. That's 16 more lings. So, when the Banelings bust down the wall, 
that is what, like double the lings that he would have had? That is pretty darn good. So missing these injects could be why that bailing bust did not work. Jiro, of course, held it off rel really, really well. But, uh, yeah. Show you guys the APM tab, uh, and we'll look at how many banelings were morphed. And then that'll be a cast. I still got three more casts, or maybe four more casts to do to finish off this replay pack. Plan on doing that today. So, we do have eight fungals and 106 baneling morphs. He may have canceled a few of those, but still way too many banelings. Hope you guys enjoyed the game. Take care, and I will see you later on.